But what is also interesting about us is that we, we are involved, you know, we have all embraced different kinds of identities, especially the ruling classes in Nigeria. Uh, the, the, the Yorubas, for example, call themselves what they are, but there is no word for, the, the word Yoruba is not a Yoruba word. Because actually the word, the Yorubas didn't give themselves the name. The word was given to them by Ahmed Baba from Songhai. And Ahmed Baba used the word Yariba, not even the Yorubas, to describe the people who lived in what is now modern day Oyo, Oshun, Lagos, and Kwara states now. But it simply meant people living in the south, in the same way that the word Hausa is not a Hausa word. And the Hausas didn't give themselves the name. It was simply given by, again, the same Ahmed Baba who was living in Songhai. And Songhai, as you know, is in modern day Niger. He was just used the word to, to refer to people who are living to the south of, uh, of, of, of Niger. In the same way that we are very proud, we know of a people called the Igbo people, but the Igbo people, Igbo is not an Igbo word. Because actually, Igbo is not an Igbo word. The, Igbo is in, the word Igbo actually was used by the people of Onicha who were largely monarchical and felt a sense of contempt for other uncultured people who lived around them. So they used the word to describe others. But now it has been adopted, and of course there are people who call themselves Igbo. If you go to if you go to Kano, if you go to Kano, for example, there is a there are words in Kano called Guamaja and Ayagi. Ayagi words in Kano, this is where the Yorubas are Ayagi quarters and the Guamaja, this is where the Yorubas are predominant. There is a part of um, one of our senior statements called Tanko Yakasai. Well, again, Yakasa is actually a Jukun word. This was a word that was used by the Jukuns. And Yakasa, I'm told in Jukun, means, wait, I'm coming. Because when the Jukuns conquered that part of what is now modern Nigeria, consolidating, and they just said, well, I'm coming, and they moved on. Now it has become a name. So I will just make the point, you know, so that we will not go away with the false illusion that there is something inherently wrong with us because identities are often and always constructed. And that is why I think what the Honorable Minister said about the need for us to invent a new tribe. But what is also very fascinating about Nigeria is you hear people talk eloquently about being Yoruba and being Igbo, about being Hausa. And yet, majority of their children don't speak the language. <laughs> and I'm not sure I know what, what those children are going to be called, because a lot of our young people now who are living in America, living in other places, they speak about home in reported terms. They say, Daddy said that we are from Abekuta. It's not them who are saying it. And I think the great thing is that this is the Nigeria we should now begin to prepare for. And that Nigeria is manifesting itself before our very eyes. As a priest, most priests will tell you, and I think it's also happening in many churches, somebody has argued that actually the National Youth Service Corps is no longer necessary, it's become redundant. In part because one out of every, I mean about six, seven out of every ten marriages in Nigeria are happening between people from completely different cultural backgrounds. Even my own little village that is in the middle of nowhere, I'm now saddled with Igbo in-laws, Yoruba in-laws, people I could never have imagined. So the world is moving very fast, and I think this is why the need to invent a new tribe is important. And I think that is what has happened in other settled democracies. 